Scientists speculate that measurements of gravitational waves from around 50 binary neutron stars over the next decade will ultimately resolve the intense debate about how quickly the universe is expanding. The cosmos has been expanding out ever since the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. Its present rate of expansion, known as the Hubble Constant, gives the time elapsed since the Big Bang. The problem is, the two best methods used to measure the Hubble Constant have conflicting results. And that all suggests that science's understanding of the structure and history of the universe, known as the Standard Model of Cosmology, may be incorrect. Now, a report in the journal Physical Review Letters shows how new independent data using gravitational waves emitted by binary neutron stars could once and for all break the deadlock between these conflicting measurements. The study's lead author, Dr. Stephen Feeney from the Flatiron Institute in New York City, says calculations indicate that by observing 50 binary neutron stars over the next decade, astronomers will have sufficient gravitational wave data to independently determine the best measurement for the Hubble constant. The Hubble constant, which was developed through the work of Edwin Hubble and George Lemaitre back in the 1920s, is one of the most important numbers in cosmology. The constant measures the expansion of the universe out from the Big Bang to the present day. It's essential for estimating the curvature of space-time, therefore the age of the universe, and for exploring the cosmos's ultimate fate. Astronomers measure the Hubble constant using two methods – The first observes Cepheid variable stars and Type 1a supernovae in the local universe, measured by the Hubble Space Telescope and the Gaia Telescope. These give a reading of an expansion rate of approximately 73.5 kilometres per second per megaparsec. A megaparsec being a million parsecs, or about 3.3 million light years. Cepheid variables are unusual stars which pulsate, in other words expand and contract, at set rates based on their intrinsic luminosity, and this can be used as standard candles to measure cosmic distances. You see, because astronomers know how intrinsically luminous a Cepheid variable is because of its pulsation rate, they can determine how far away that star is, in exactly the same way as a row of streetlights all of the same brightness, but the ones further down the road will appear dimmer than the ones nearest to you. In physics, it's called the inverse square law. And the same goes for exploding stars called Type 1a supernovae. These stars all explode at about the same mass, and so roughly with the same amount of brightness. And so, like Cepheid variables, they can be used to determine cosmic distances through the inverse square law. Now, the second method for determining the Hubble constant uses measurements of the cosmic microwave background radiation. In simple terms, the cosmic microwave background is the leftover heat from the Big Bang, now just 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. It was released when the cosmos cooled enough for the first atoms to form and photons to escape, about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, which, according to measurements by the Planck spacecraft, is 67 kilometres per second per megaparsec, significantly slower than the Hubble Gaia measurements. Having two different numbers for the Hubble constant means science's understanding of cosmology is obviously missing something. So, to try and resolve the issue, the authors have set about trying to develop a third method to calculate the Hubble constant, coming up with a universally applicable technique using gravitational wave data. A gravitational wave is generated by a moving mass, such as merging neutron stars or black holes. As it passes through the cosmos, the gravitational wave causes the very fabric of space-time to stretch and compress ever so slightly. It's just a fraction of the diameter of a proton. But now, thanks to gravitational wave observatories like LIGO and Virgo, scientists can detect it. Gravitational waves emitted when binary neutron stars spiral towards each other before colliding also emit a flash of bright light, which can be detected by telescopes. While binary neutron stars are rare, they'll be invaluable for providing another route to track how the universe is expanding. The gravitational waves they emit will ripple across space-time. They'll be detected by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatories LIGO and Virgo, giving a precise measurement of the system's distance from Earth. And by also detecting the light from the accompanying explosion using electromagnetic telescopes, astronomers will be able to determine the system's velocity, and hence calculate the Hubble constant using Hubble's law. For this study, the authors modelled how many such observations would be needed to resolve the issue, ultimately coming up with a figure of 50 such observations. And this in turn will lead to the most accurate picture of how the universe is expanding and how it will ultimately end.